Hello guys, good morning. This class will be a little bit different. We'll be seeing each other face to face. Today we're going to talk about note taking. I don't know if you've heard that before, talking about consecutive interpretation that we have previously checked that in class. So it is important to know that note-taking is a wide method to remember information that is typically stored in our short-term memory. So we don't forget very, very fast what we just heard. We can have some notes. Of course, this doesn't mean that you're going to be taking notes of every single word the speaker is saying just some symbols or you can also have your own symbols your uh, use acronyms um, so you can have that faster as i said this doesn't mean you have to take notes of every single word the speaker is saying just some keywords so you can remember the whole the whole speech that was said before. So to begin with, we have to check why is note taking important. First of all, is because it helps us to stay focused. It also facilitates the analysis of the speech or helps us recall or remember information um, especially for dates. Sometimes we don't remember the date, so you can take notes, numbers, or names, also some unfamiliar words. Some words you are not familiar with, um, note taking is very important to remember that. Also, it helps us um, realizing that our short-term memory, sometimes um, we just have to rem remember everything at the same time. So then we are going to check how an effective note taking can take place during the consecutive interpreting. First of all, the interpreter and the speaker need to be face-to-face, face-to-face, face -to -face so you can, I mean, if you are the interpreter, you can check the lips, you can have a more accurate input of the speech. Also, having an appropriate volume, knowing the flow and the nature of the conversation, and also to have your notes next to you or your pen or your pencil next to you. As an interpreter, you need to be prepared. We are also going to check some key acronyms that some interpreters use, um, some tips to do the note taking correctly and to have the cognitive skills. For example, during the consecutive interpretation, as you checked in your homework, some of you previously sent me your homework, you have first a listening phase. You listen, you try to remember some things, and you can also do some notes, take some notes. Then, that is one process. Then you pause and next you try to reformulate what you have already have as a speech. So you read your notes, try to remember from your memory um, what you've heard, and then you produce in the target language. It is important to have an analysis of what the message is 
also have some information and knowledge about the culture of the languages we are talking because sometimes we we heard uh, we heard some idioms we heard some phrasal verbs or something we are not so used to so we as interpreters need to know something about the culture because some phrases are not translated word to word and they are more like dichos or something that we need to to have an accurate um, interpretation so here i have a few abbreviations or m acronyms as you can see we have eg for example i'm pretty sure you already know some of them and um, you can use this while having your notes taking notes in the interpretation and also you can have some symbols you can also have some drawings we are going to practice a little bit with that but here you can have for example mister instead of having if you if you hear mister in spanish we have s r that is Señor, instead of having señor, you just write SR, and you don't need to write the whole word. Here I have an example of notes from consecutive interpreting. As you can see, there's a 60, there is Y slash O, that means years old. Then you have a drawing and some other symbols. As I said, you can have your own or you can use from, from what you've learned before. You can have abbreviations or whatever. It's like your own language. It is important that you understand. On the screen, you can also check a list of some symbols that you can use. For example, instead of having two words like less than, you can also have just that symbol or the equals. Instead of writing the word, you can just draw the symbol. And as I said, you can also have your own your own ones, you can use these ones or some abbreviations previously known or acronyms previously known. So now we have an activity. Please have next to you your notebook or your pen or pencil. We are going to take some notes. Please try not to look for the meaning of these phrases that we are going to have next that are some idioms actually try not to look for them on the internet traten de no buscarlo en el internet solamente este pues en, traten de entender lo que dice no, van a tomar notas de eso you will take notes and um, what you understand so the first one will be it's raining cats and dogs let's imagine that you are having an interpretation consecutive interpretation you are there you are being the interpreter and then the speaker says it's raining cats and dogs what would you write on your notes what would you do Let's say that you are there and just write the first thing that comes to your mind. You can have <laughs> drawings, you can have symbols, whatever you want. 
<coughs> then you're going to send this activity to WhatsApp. Take a picture of your notes and then you send them to me. So the first one is, it's raining cats and dogs. Then you have, in a nutshell, what would you, would you write on your notes that is in a nutshell? Then, number three, are you pulling my leg? So the, the drawings that are there are just um, drawing. That doesn't mean that that is the meaning. So first one, it's raining cats and dogs in a nutshell. And the third one, are you pulling my leg? It's very easy. So let's say that you will take notes of those three. How would you take notes? Maybe you can draw something, you can have abbreviations, you can have acronyms, whatever that works to you, it's fine. Remember that note taking is not that this is correct and this is incorrect. No, you can, it's flexible. You can have your own, your own um, language to take notes. So please take the notes and when you finish, take a picture and send them to the group. So we can check if you were um, taking notes similar to another of your classmates or everybody had different things, we're going to check on that. Goodbye, take care, have a nice day.